Hi everybody, I'm here with Kevin at the wonderful Fluid Audio. How are you? Great, how are you? I'm Thank good, I'm good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So we reviewed these, how many years ago now? Four years ago? Uh, not that long ago, maybe maybe two, two, three years ago maybe. Was it pre-pandemic or post-pandemic? It was pre-pandemic. So, so it was, it, be at it least was, three, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Jeez, yeah. Time it's 2019. flies. 2019. Time flies. Here we are at 2024 now. <laughs> so I did just give these a listen because we're in an environment here where obviously it's NAM, which means when it's quiet, it's loud. Yes. And when it's loud, it's bleeding loud. Yeah, um, unfortunately, yes. Dual concentric, or what, what do you call this in America now? It's the- uh, this, We call it coaxial. Coaxial, that's coaxial, the coolest word. Yeah, dual concentric is somewhat trademarked to, to someone else. We execute it a little bit differently instead of pushing the high frequency into the voice coil cavity and then use the the, the cone is a waveguide, which is constantly moving, and yeah. you get intermodulation distortion off of the cone. We just pulled it right off of, of the thing. Has its own hard faceplate uh, for the okay. high frequency. Uh, and we do it that way, and we get great imaging. You get still get the point source goodness. And I just listened to these, uh, you know, off camera, and I like where the mid range is sitting now. It's really really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. good job. Yep. So the the eights are what five hundred a pair? Yes. I have yes. to talk in pairs. I know it's uh, manifold tractors like to talk in singles, but I think most of the people in this price range right. are just thinking about buying a pair. You right, know? I would agree. I'm I sure you're obviously going to sell people to Atmos and immersive rigs. We have, we have. There's there's mounting uh, on the back for a bracket for mounting for and Atmos. And I see you've got toggle switches on the back for different Yeah, this one's easy to lift, actually. Right, right. It's the same amplifier, basically. Yep. So there's dip switches for high frequency trim, mid, low frequency, uh, cut off, and... Uh, Acoustic space um, and Amazing. also TRS, RCA, and, and uh, XLR. So an unbalanced input there. You've got a balance. And these are covered with little rubber grommet things, but that's where you screw in for the bracket. I see. Perfect. Yeah. And We're, these are 300 a pair, yes? 300 a pair, yeah. Great. Yeah. 90 total watts by amp, uh, class D amplification with DSP for all of the tuning. And what's the what's the uh, the, the one, volume? One, the power one, of these? one ten. One ten. These. Okay. Yeah. I hate saying wattage. Is that right? Wattage. Yeah. Yeah. Wattage. It's always because you know, people people take impedance and call it ohmage. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that is you stretch. Yeah. That's a whole other one. <laughs> Wonderful. What about? Tell me about this sub. We didn't talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. FC ten S, uh, ten inch, uh, two hundred watt class D subwoofer. How much? Three ninety nine. Okay, that's, that's a good price. For that, uh, XLR, TRS in. Um, the cool thing is the variable phase. A lot of fa phase on a lot of these amps is, you know, zero and 180, yeah, which yeah. sometimes it's in between somewhere. Absolutely, so you yeah. Can, you, can really, yeah. you can really dial in the, 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 the sound uh, to, to match your mains. Yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't skip over this because, uh, you know, we, we just did a whole do you need a sub video? And it's, uh -huh. it's, it's interesting because obviously so many people are working in more of an electronic world than they ever were before. And there's a demand for a dynamic range and more importantly, frequency range that, that is unheard of in sort of classic rock world. Yeah, sure. You know, so subs are becoming almost we, imperative. We have an eight as well, the uh, F8S, which is a 200 watt, eight, 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 eight inch driver too. And how much is that? That one's 299. That's awesome. Good pricing. Good and it's pricing. Uh, diminutive. You know, you put it under your under your desk, and it hides itself. It's but it sounds good. Down to forty. Well, that one's forty-five. This one's thirty-five, roughly. I was talking to my friend Gavin Havistick, and uh -huh. he says you've got to do the crawl test. He's like, get down on your hands and knees and crawl around on the floor with your speakers playing, and find where the low end sounds the best. Then put your sub there. That's, a, that's, that's interesting. A, that's he says often it's, it's low in between the speakers. He says but sometimes it's over here or over there. Yeah. It's not glamorous for crawling around yeah, on your the floor. crawl test. I like that. <laughs> so let's check out what you've got going on over here. Yes. Yeah, so we talked about the separate subs, which can be sometimes a challenge dialing into your mains. If you know it's handy to have the variable phase, but if you have a built-in subwoofer, these have two built-in eight-inch side firing drivers so 225 watts per per side so four, 450 per 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 box it's eq down to 40 hertz flat 
uh, and that's pa and actually there's it's joined with a bolt in between, so it kills a lot of that uh, uh, box resonance. You know, makes the the box fairly inert, which really helps with the mid range. Believe it or not. Um, speaking of mid range, five and a quarter inch aluminum cone with a shorting ring to minimize distortion. All of those tricks that acoustic people like to do, like me. Um, so. Tell me about this tweeter. So it's a ribbon tweeter. You it's call AMT. It like, AMT. And you're calling it AMT. Yeah, yeah. It's an air motion transformer, a real, yeah. uh, a real one. Um, you know, the trick to AMTs is they're so fast and so transient quick that they're kind of tricky to voice with. You know, Adam, some people say, oh, they're kind of harsh after a while. They're, they're a little bit forward. So it's sort of like a Ferrari, you know. You can't, you can't drive it crazy. So voicing the AMT is really crucial. And you just heard it, it's, it's not too forward. It's not too abrasive. Um, so we think we've got the voicing correct on, on this. Honestly, I, these sound fantastic. Yeah, really, and, really good. We did hear them off camera. These sound beautiful too. We're gonna to get these speakers for proper reviews. So we'll do proper reviews in our studio in LA, which is, like I said, you know, designed by Jay Corfman. Beautiful sounding room. Uh -huh. Excited to test these out. Really beautiful. Yeah. So, oh, one more thing. Yes, please. Uh, so let me turn this around. Of course, yep. there's the usual trim, trim things for high frequency, low frequency, mid frequency. We also partnered with Sonar Works. Lovely. So that we could export the calibration file and upload it via DS, via uh, via USB. We're also going to do a V2 pretty soon. When the when the image one comes out, it's going to change the Ethernet and so for networking for Atmos and etc. But I just wanted to show you the back because we have analog in, we have digital in, AES, SPIDF for functionality and et cetera, et cetera. No, it's fantastic. And Amazing. For, for a compact box, it puts out a lot of a lot of energy. So you said you would do a giveaway. What are we going to do with the giveaway on? So you, so you tell me. I'll give you a pair and you give them to whoever wins. You mean a pair uh, of these beautiful speakers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is ridiculous. This, yeah. this is a $4,000? Uh, Thirty-five. But that's, up, but that's up there. That's that's up there. That's a heck of a gift. <laughs> Good and, luck, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, that's an amazing giveaway. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, listening to these um, and knowing the music that I know, I am really impressed with how flat they are. I'm also impressed with it. Must be the AMT that I like because the mid range is forward, which I prefer because I grew up on NS10s and 1032s. Sure. What everybody did in the 90s. And as a guitar player, it's and a guitar player, <laughs> we like our mid range forward. Sure. But not harsh. Not harsh. Most of those speakers I grew up on now are so unbelievably fatiguing. You know, so wonderful. That's, that's an amazing giveaway. Really, really cool. Excellent. So there will be a link down below to win these. And uh, we will do a full review. So check that out as well. Thank you, Kevin. I really Thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. coming by. Thank you. So we're here with Robin. How are you? At Great Phoenix. to see you, Warren. It's always yeah. good to see you. Thank you. Great to see you. Great to speak to the uh, producer pro uh, crowd. So we have two new products that we're excited to launch uh, this good. year's now. So the first one is the Ascent 500, which is a kind of classic uh, Phoenix Audio mic pre. So you have the transformless input there, which means you can capture all of those frequencies. And then you have the Class A circuitry and the transformer where you can kind of color, saturate it, slow it down. So what we kind of like about this or what makes it cool is you have a vocal effect. So it's like an EQ. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you more. Tell me uh, more. I'm intrigued. Essentially, it's like a high frequency shaving <laughs> EQ. So you have three selectable frequencies, 10K, 15K, and Sheen, and then you have 16 dB of cut and boost there, where you have really a lot of gain, a lot of control to kind of do something with the vocals. Add that kind of Sheen, the glimmer, or cut. So what what is Sheen? 20K? Sheen is 25K. 25K. Yeah. So it's basically taking a point here and then boosting it so it's doing a very gradual yeah, lift. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So it just kind of adds the air glimmer presence to say vocals. What, what all the people call an air yes, band. Yes, but it's yes. We can't say that word, obviously. Okay, all right, but that's cool. No. Just so people understand. That's awesome. How much is it? This is going to be $7.99, and it's going to be out in about a month or so. So you also have a variable high-pass filter on there. 
Uh, like all our modules, they actually run at 24 volts, not 16 volts, because that has a special power supply built in. So that makes a big, big difference. Makes these actually sound like these. Because a lot of the time, some of the brands, these don't sound like these. Sure. Because so, of the your, power so your 500 series sounds like your 19 inch tracker. Exactly, yeah. That's always what we want. We want them all to basically sound the same, so there's not one that's inferior to the others. Great. What else you got for us? What else do we have? We have this. I have probably the predecessors to this. Yes. So this is called Scion. So we've been making summing mixers around 20 odd years now. And the idea behind summing mixers, in our sense, is to basically offer a large format console in basically a small rack mount by size thing. So guys like yourself that have those large format consoles, it's kind of sometimes they actually want something that doesn't taking up the whole room. And that's what the kind of idea behind this is. Now the really cool thing about Scion, as opposed to a lot of other summing mixers on the market is, this has three color circuits in it. Okay. So we have one that's colored, which uses the uh, Class A uh, output amps and the transformers. And this is more colored than the previous ones we made. We wanted to accentuate the color a lot more. We then have a clean output, where it's basically a really clean Class A uh, output. And then we have a hybrid one. And the hybrid is, you can be able to mix somewhere between the two. And you have like essentially like a wet and dry switch there. Okay. So the idea is that a producer can basically offer three different mixes simultaneously because you have six outputs on there. Okay. So you can actually do three things at once. The drive control, how does it work? Drive pushes it harder through the analog circuitry. So it kind of fattens everything up, makes it sound better. But how much of a boost is it? Like a it's about 8 dB. 8 so dB? It's quite noticeable, yeah. You put that on and it makes everything bigger, fatter, okay. rounder. And let's have a look on the back. So, so there's the inserts on the master bus. Yeah, you've got bus links, so you can link two units together. And yeah. there's one, two, three, three sets of outputs. So you can actually record three separate mixes all at the same time. Feta is basically, it's a kind of a weird product because there is nothing on the market that does what this does. What does it do? It's an eight channel instrument preamp. We have 30 dB of gain, so you've got a lot of gain, a lot of control to increase levels and to saturate it. You can literally plug anything you want into there. Keyboards, guitars, bass guitars, electronic drums, uh, any kind of electronic instruments, samplers, whatever. It will also take a balance line level signal, which is pretty crazy for an instrument preamp, because normally they will never ever accept that hotter level. You have a variable high pass on every single channel. You have things like pads, phases, ground lift on the back. But the cool thing about the box is the routing matrix. You can route any of the individual eight channels or all of them to a stereo bus on the end. So then it becomes kind of cool. So if you have a keyboard rig, you can basically route everything just to two channels. If you're a guy who has an audio interface with a limited amount of inputs on it, like a UA or even a small Pro Tools rig, you can basically use that as your front end for everything, just to go straight into that. How much is it? That is $2,600. And it's eight channels? It's eight channels, but you have 24 inputs and 20 outputs. So you have so many options and flexibility, you can do a lot of stuff with it. And you build this in the US? Everything's built in the US, in uh, Orange County, so we're actually local. This is cool for us because we live down the street. It's the best show for you. Exactly, yeah. It could be better if it was maybe in my uh, living room. Well, maybe we'll move it to your living room yeah, next that year. that sounds good. Yeah. Marvellous, thank you very Thanks much, Robin. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Cool. No worries, man. I'm here with Dave at API. How the devil are you? I am fantastic. His look is iconic. <laughs> I am next year I'm gonna come with a red beard and a flat cap. Yeah, totally cool. Found I might start selling them. Yeah. But right, you know, just have a little side business. It's awesome. And then so I'll, much we'll so switch. We'll switch. I'll come back with you'll come back with, with badly and a, and a jet black nice dyed hair yeah. with yeah, yeah. Very good. All right, marvelous. What have you got here? So this is the last of 10 special edition 1608s that we came out with at the end of last year. Um, this is a you know, throwback to the vintage 70s look of the iconic API consoles. Yeah, there's um, a studio in Seattle, Evast. Is it yeah, Evast? They yeah. have a cream one. No, yeah, yeah the, at uh, Electric Lady in New York, they also have a cream colored API. Yeah. There's one down at House of David in yeah. uh, Nashville. But uh, we've been getting requests from people for a long time about, hey, we, would you ever do a blonde console again? 
It was the 15th anniversary of the 1608. We have over 720 units sold worldwide in 15 wow. years. So we're like, and I think ours was like 0, 073 like, or 4 or something right. like that. Yeah. I can't believe you sold 750 since then. I know. Then. It's crazy. It's not surprising though. So. Best in class at the price. Nobody, nobody comes close. But they all, everybody knows that. Yeah, Even your competitors. Yeah. So, 1608 Special Edition yeah. with Final Touch Automation. And actually one cool thing, when we came out of the console, we had a lot of people call us and say, we really want the 558s and 560s available in cream as a standard product. Sure. So for a limited time only this year, we're offering 558s and 560s available for your lunchbox right. in cream color. Oh, and, and Tommy's brother has a cream one as well. Yeah. Dan, Dan Vicari yeah. has a cream one. That's true. And this has got the full... Final touch automation. Oh, wow, look at that. Which I know you and I have talked about previously. Yeah. You know, yeah, amazing. Uh, love it. How much is it? Come on, scare me. So for the special edition, that's 68.9. Loaded. Loaded with Final Touch Automation and EQ. Look, I know that's a lot of money, people, but it's not a lot of money, but it's a lot of money. It's so like one of those things for, for, for a centerpiece for your studio. Yeah. And I mean, 16 channels of classic API mic free. Yeah. 16 channels of API EQ. Yeah. Full featured center section, four yeah. stereo returns, talk back. I mean, and the automation is just the icing on the cake. Amazing. And what else? Is something else you wanted to show me? Well, I mean, we have our 2448, which, you know, sort of next step up, right? Sold. Yes. Who bought it? Uh, a customer who lives uh, about an hour away from the, the convention center actually purchased it. On, oh, wow. On day one. So nice. Congrats. We're going to deliver to him after the show. But so the 2448 is a 1608, but with a second fader path. So the fully inline console on a small fader here. Same bus architecture, same EQ layout. This is a 24 channel. What we're finding now is almost there. We got it in read mode. I'll put it back in manual for you. Thank you, yeah. Um, so on uh, our 2448s, this has become the kind of desired co um, configuration with a 30 inch producer's desk in the middle and a monitor mount. So this is a 24 channel, but it has 64 inputs to the mix bus. I got a little break in the uh, of there is. beat there. This is right gorgeous. when you go to solo. <laughs> So same automation system, because now yep. Final Touch is in every automated console that we make. Great. 1608, 2448, Legacy Access, and Vision all use the same proprietary automation. It's a work of art, rather gorgeous. Is that Amphiums? Yeah. I don't know this model. Yeah, these I are the new, uh, the 125As. Very satisfying to sit behind one of these. No. Don't worry, Warren. This one's sold, but we can build another one just like it for you. Okay. The special, 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 yeah, special, special, bus. special. It's gorgeous. Oh. Really gorgeous. What wood is this? I know it's completely nothing to do with the. Yeah, so, so we do uh, American Cherry with an Osmo finish on all of our consoles. The great thing about this is it's really, you know, if it gets scratched, you can simply sand it down and put a little oil on it. It's good to go. You don't have to refinish it. You know, you see so many wood bolsters just getting nicked and nicked and nicked. Yeah, yeah. So it's just really great for maintenance over time. <laughs> they age well. Really gorgeous. So we actually just delivered a console just like this to uh, Kid Harpoon for his studio here in L.A. Yeah. Work of art. How much does 24 channel go for? Uh, 24 channel in this configuration with automation is going to yeah. be about 110. Right, right. Very nice indeed. Fully automated. Fully automated with EQ. With no, um, with no automation? Uh, about 15,000 less. Okay. All right, cool. So that then, is that about 60 without automation? Without automation on a standard 1608. Yeah, yeah 49.9 for a loaded, loaded manual console. Oh, wow. That's pretty darn good. Wheels are turning. Yeah, thank you, Rock. Always a pleasure. Always. What's up, everyone? It's day three, and we are at the Sonox booth, and we have something really cool here. Uh, my, my friend Frank was just kind of walking me through this, and I said, whoa, whoa, let's put this on the channel. Um, it, it's a... Kind of this forward-thinking thing in the software world that's going on where 
there's tons, of course, of recreations of great software from the or hardware from the past. Yeah. Fairchilds, LA2As, and all that. All that's amazing, and I use a ton of it. But there's this also trend, this is trend towards some new plugins. You know, where one plugin does the job of what maybe used to be four or three or five pl uh, plugins. And you were just showing me Boca. Boca. Correct. Boca. Well, let's get the camera in here, and why don't you just show us a demo? All right. So Boca starts off with the input. It's an auto input. So it gets rid of all that time consuming, clip gaining, or automation to make your vocal even. You just pick a spot, you hit optimize, and the, it says, okay, we're gonna make your vocal that level the whole time. That, that to me, that right there is, that could be a plug-in all by itself. I mean, like, cause I, one of my first steps in a mix, and as I know most of these guys too, is clip, clip gaining a vocal to try to get it in a consistent spot for our compression or a DS thing and everything. So that kind of is taking care of a lot of that force. Yes. All right, cool, cool. So once we even everything out, we jump to the other side of the plug-in for the soften stage. Now the soften stage is a dynamic resonance suppressor on a small scale and doesn't doesn't do as much as some of the other ones out there. So you can actually just turn it all the way up and almost say, that's the sound. I want to get rid of those things. So we're getting rid of S's and harshness in the mid-range. Okay, so like the harshness, we're talking like 2K, 3K, kind of taking the edge off of some vocals. Exactly. And then, you know, four, five, six, seven K for the sibilance control. Okay. And doing that with one knob. One knob, okay, awesome. All right, then we're gonna jump over to the compression stage. And in the compression stage, you have an X axis and a Y axis. Y is pretty easy. How much compression? Zero or 100? We're not trying to deal with numbers because we want people to use their ears. So no ratio, no threshold, just zero to 100. Okay. And then the other access is what type of compression. So on the right side, we have 1176 compression, which is very fast and very aggressive. No coloring or anything, just that style. And then if we go to the left side, that's LA-2A, very smooth compression. Okay. So this is the standard vocal chain that almost everyone uses. One of those into the other one, you got a vocal sound. So just to make sure I understand right, we'll look on the screen. If I'm gonna use light compression, I'm gonna be down here. Yep. If I want uh, kind of a low ratio, a low amount of compression, I'm in here on 1176. Yes. No, just tickling an LA-2A is up here. Yes. If and I actually, want a hammer, oh, I'm sorry. If you're, if you're not all the way to the end, you're actually getting the LA-2A and a little bit of the 1176. Oh, and the, so this is a hybrid. We're, we're blending, ah. Unless you go all the way over, then you're really getting one or the other. Okay. So I want to get aggressive with the 76. I'm going up here. Correct. And I want to get aggressive with an LA-2A. I'm up here. Exactly. Or, okay. Wow. That is... Very nice, nice. I can't wait to hear it. I know trade room floors are not the best thing to hear a place, but uh, hear it. But I, I'm going to definitely uh, demo this. That's cool. And then we go over to since this is colorless, we always in modern, especially digital recording, we want to add something to get that old school sound. Yeah. So we come over to saturation. Similar deal, up and down. How much saturation are we doing? Yeah. What are we talking about? And then there's a tilt EQ. If we go to the right, you'll notice the UI gets a lot brighter. Yeah. That's a brightness. Things are coming toward us in the mix. And if we go over to the left, things are going to get darker. Things are moving away from us in the mix. And you're, this is this an EQ or is this the, this is the harmonic? Harmonic content shaping that harmonic content. Okay. So the harmonic content is being exaggerated in the upper mids versus the, okay. okay. Exactly. And then after we do all of that, we have an output stage. It's also very cool. When we even it out, you can also go a little nuts, throw this in, and then you're really getting a lot of stuff going on. So, okay. and that does not affect the evenness that you created to start with. Very cool. And then last but not least, we have a recording mode. So we just jump over here for a second, and then I throw on the delay compensation. So we're looking at this track. Right now we have 595 on the delay, right? Yeah. I hit recording mode. It was right to zero. Oh. Zero latency in the recording mode. Wow. 
that's really, I mean, forward thinking is the word that I, you know. That's uh, what Sonox, yeah. Sonox does for a long time, especially with the toolbox range that they're working on now. That's that's extremely cool. Well, now you, I know you're a generous person because before we started rolling the camera, you said you uh, love the Produce Like a Pro channel, you watch it and all uh, that good yes. stuff. And that you wanted to be generous with our with our friends. So we're gonna do five free licenses for the Produce Like a Pro listeners for our vocal plug. That's awesome. That's awesome. So on the down below, there's gonna be a link. Enter to win one of these five uh, instances, and you will be like me when you get home. And you're gonna be trying this same thing because I think Tuesday morning when I arrive in Nashville, I'm gonna download a demo. <laughs> also, 15 day free trial on the website. Uh, in the meantime, while you're waiting to win. Nice, nice. All right, well, thank you for your time, Frank. I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone, we're at the Oak Sound booth. Now, most of all you guys know that name, and you know them from great products like Sooth 2, which is that's become an industry standard. And that put you guys on the map for sure, I'm sure. Everyone knows that name. Spiff, if you haven't tried it, it's great. I have them both. But now you guys have a new product. Yes, we announced Bloom just two or three days ago. Well, yeah. what if we talk about it a little bit? You want to tell us all about it? Absolutely. All right. What kind of stuff can we do with it? Um, basically, it tries to uh, balance your in input signal in uh, frequency-wise. Okay. So basically, you can do your uh, broad strokes, tone shaping EQ automatically with Bloom, and it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of uh, what, what direction you want to go with it, but it takes care of like uh, boominess and uh, nasalness and that kind of issues almost automatically and chooses those like uh, exact frequencies for you. Okay, so for example, one of my first inserts on a vocal is usually multiband compression. All right. And I divide it into four groups, right? My low one is controlling, let's say the singer gets down in here, you know, maybe, maybe that's set to around 270 or something like that. So when they dip down, it's stuck in it down. Yeah. If they get harsh in the upper mids, it's stuck in it down. Yeah. Electric guitar, you know, whatever. So it's that kind of thinking. Yeah. But it's for it's sure. not compression? No, but it does include, you see the amount knob. At the end of the amount knob, there's the zone that we call squash. That's when it get, goes into compression style thing. Okay. Where it's uh, frequency based, upward and downward compression, where oh, it's okay. actually forcing the signal towards what it thinks is balanced in oh, that Oh, gotcha. Okay, so let's take it a step further where I'm just suppressing something. This can also do like, ex expansion, we'll call it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you want, we can take a look at how it works on a vocal take because that, that's what you brought up. Yeah. Because I think it does a similar thing as you were talking about. Let's bypass Bloom. Yeah. Just hold me right. We'll be like this all night. So that's an SM7B. Uh -huh. It's quite honky, quite dark. So let's put Bloom in. Okay. Hope they just hold me right. Boosting a lot of the high end. We'll be like this all night. But on sibilance, you see it cuts down. Because I believe I got the juice. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't I, boost the sibilance because it's, I hear that. it's constantly taking into account that uh, total frequency balance that's going on. So if there's a momentary spike at 6K that's, a, that's obnoxious, it's throwing it down momentarily. Yeah, because okay. it, it's like it, this doesn't need more than 6K because it's boosting that a lot, the sibilance or whatever. Stuff. Okay. And if we just go to the default preset, this is how it opens up. We can just boost the amount up. We'll be like this all night. And it's controlling the honkiness. I'm a believer of the truth. Because I believe I got the truth. Yeah, we, I see we can do, we have a dry wet. Yes. Dry wet, yeah. You can, you can really crank it. Hold me, just hold me And just bring it right. suddenly in. We'll be like this all night. But then... From here, you can control it. You can choose the. This is an XY pad. You can control the gain and the frequencies where you want to, uh, where you want to boost or cut more. So you want more high. Let's 
starts off pretty good. Yeah. We're still getting some harshness, so I'll put, put on suit. Hold there. me, just hold me right. We'll be like this all right. Hold me. And that's a lot, lot better starting point for oh, you absolutely. to get, get going. So then you, then you start your, your processing. Yeah. Yeah, your tray. Yeah, okay. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, that, that that's another example. We were at a, another booth earlier. We were talking about the differences between, you know, some software, and we love it. It's based on LA2As or 3As or whatever, yeah. and we want that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But you guys are one of the people that's pioneering the other side of that, where it's like moving technology forward that we've never even thought of the possibility of it existing. So, um, well done, sir. Thank you <laughs> well much. Done. I appreciate you taking time to show us this. Oh, of course. Thank, Thank you. you so much Very for coming much. by. Yes, you bet. What's up, everyone? I'm at the Kit Plugins booth, day three at NAMM, and I'm with my friend Matt, who I know from Nashville. Great to see you. Yeah, yeah, good to see you as well. Welcome so, in. Speaking of Nashville, you guys have a really good partnership with Blackbird Studio. Absolutely. One of the premier studios in the entire world. Yeah. And so you have some new products to talk about based around possibly something that's coming from Blackbird. Is that right? Absolutely. We have a, a new announcement. The plugin will be coming in a few months, but uh, we wanted to show it here at NAMM, let, give people a little uh, teaser. Yeah, let's give them taste. a preview. Let's give so, them a preview. You can come on in here. So we can probably focus on the left side of the screen here, but yeah, real right quick, um, get rid of this. We've got... Uh, the Studio A reverb chamber from Blackbird. So in the Blackbird studio in Nashville, John envisioned this amazing idea of a small room with a moving ceiling. So you can bring it all the way down to seven or eight feet, bring it all the way up to 20 or so feet, and hear that change in real time. You know, you can have uh, longer reverb, you can have uh, a different tone. So we set out about 18 months ago to build this plugin and realized that we, we couldn't really do it with the technology available, and we wanted to take a different approach. So we spent 18 months building an artificial intelligent neural network that can recreate rooms, spaces, and reverbs based on the input data we feed it. This is the first product using that tech, but we have a whole lot of plans for the future with Blackbird and with our other partners to do more reverbs, room emulations. But let's talk specifically about this one. Yeah. Um, right inside the plugin, as we said, you got a moving ceiling. So three ways you can control the ceiling. One is here with the blueprint, one's here with the slider, or just grab that microphone and yank it up and down. Because we're not using convolution, there's no impulse responses. You don't have to wait for it to adjust or hear any pops and clicks or little steps. It's a fluid adjustment. You can select the microphone, John's favorite C24, RD8, or pair of 414s, place them on the ceiling and floor. You can select how you want the sound getting into the chamber. Direct basically means your source is in there. Uh, hi fi speaker modeled after a studio monitor, or PA speaker, which is how most people at Blackbird tend to reamp. It's got a very pronounced mid bump. Now, it wouldn't be Blackbird if we only gave you half the equation, right? right? right. So the return channel is probably just as important, if not more. The way John likes to return it changes, but we picked one of the most common and best ways. You got a 1073 preamp to capture that microphone, a 31105 EQ with a few less uh, parameters, just what yeah. you need, yeah. and a compressor. We wanted a one-knob compressor, so we decided not to base it on anything real. John gave us a description of what he liked, and we built that. You have pre and post filters, input and output control, everything you can need in a reverb. This is a pre-release build, so there's a few small changes. One thing is the uh, meters don't work on this build. They will in the release, of course. We're also adding a ducking feature in the release, so the compressor can turn into a ducker, where it'll take that input signal as a side chain. When that gets louder, it'll back off the reverb. When it, your input dies down, the reverb tail will come back up. It'll be a really uh, cool feature for vocals or anything where you want a luscious reverb, but you don't want to muddy anything up. Uh, we're going to try and do a little audio demo here. Show floor is not the best place for it, but we'll do our yeah, best. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna just solo a vocal here. We got a we got a great song by my close friend Mike Miz. I recorded this song with uh, Steve Marcantonio in Blackbird. Um, we replaced all the drums with our new drum plugin that we also announced today. And then all the reverb you're gonna hear comes from the plugin. So here's a taste of the whole song. It's just another two cents. Tell me now. We can solo out this vocal so we can hear this reverb. It's just another two cents. Tell me now. I'm using the reverb on an auxiliary track simply so I can send drums and vocals to it. Yeah. But you can use it directly on your track. We have full mix control. So right here, we have the mix control. You drop it on your vocals, pull that back. And everything in the plugin other than the pre-filter is parallel. Very cool. So you can blend it all in. Uh, 
Well, it's just now, another two cents. If I mute the vocal, crank up this reverb, make sure I don't mute my set. I can bring that ceiling all the way up. I can bring that ceiling all the way down. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Bring it closer. Throw the microphone on the floor. You don't get the tonal difference you just get with you. The microphone isn't moving. You can swap to an R88. Swap to a 414. You can put in that PA speaker. You got the saturation, the EQ, and the compression to do whatever you want to it. You also have a built in pre delay. So using the AI, we removed the natural pre delay from the speaker to the microphone. It's right. instant. Right. You put whatever pre delay you want in, you move the ceiling anywhere you want, it won't mess with that. Right. So if you're doing a pop song, you want a long pre delay, so the vocal's here and the reverb's back there, you can do that. You're doing a country record, you want that really reverberant vocal, you just pull that pre delay down. The ceiling is disconnected. You know, it's one of those beautiful things about plugins. We can take real life and then we can do things that make your life a little easier yeah. than real life. Yeah. No more phase alignment issues where your pre delay is too long because the ceiling was all the way up. I I've been in that chamber, and that, that is a special sounding chamber. But just being in there while the ceiling is going up and down is a, is a pretty cool experience. Now you guys, I, I will say, I use a lot of your plugins. I have your Neves, your 73, uh, your 1080, well, the, the 8078 that's actually in that room, the, the A room, is yep. a great plug. Uh, the You have the uh, the big console in the D, in the D room, yep. you know. Yeah, the A5. Uh, yeah, the A5 plugins, a lot of great stuff. And you were kind enough before we went on camera um, to say that you would actually consider uh, letting some of our friends have a chance to enter to win. Absolutely. So we talked about it, and you know, we thought it'd be a great opportunity. We're announcing a new Blackboard, Blackbird plugin, a whole platform. There's going to be more reverbs from Blackbird using this technology. So we thought uh, uh, giving away three Blackbird bundles from our website would be a great way to sort of celebrate that. It's a big milestone for us to finally get this technology out here after 18 months. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations, man. It Thank sounds, you very it sounds much. great. The drum. I know we. We now have time to feature all of it, but the drum machine is really, really cool too. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, so if, if you're watching this, be sure and head over to the, are you, will it be on your website soon? We have a, a little bit of info on the website now. Drums will be out in uh, about a month, month and a half. Okay. Um, and like everything we do, 14 day free trial. So you can go try it for yourself, see what all the cool features in there. Well, I, I appreciate you giving that bundle. Listen, guys, that, that bundle, whoever wins that, or the three people that win that, are going to be very happy because that's a, that's a, there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of really good stuff. So thank you for uh, participating. Absolutely. Thank you All guys right. for taking the time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, guys? It's Joe. I'm at the ISO Acoustics booth with Sean from ISO Acoustics on day three. Most of us, when we think of ISO Acoustics, we think of these. I know that's one of the first things I think about, that, which are amazing. I, I am actually switching to these currently uh, oh. from something else um, that's a lot more uh, less attractive. <laughs> yeah. uh, we think of these kind of thing that come in a lot of different sizes. You guys, we've covered these before. Everyone probably it. knows that. Height and tilt adjustment. Right, right, exactly. It. Very, very versatile products. Yeah, yeah, very cool. But you guys are kind of leading uh, the way on the at when you think about Atmos. We don't think about these, right? Because we're thinking about ceilings and, and mounting right. mounting off sidewalls and everything. You got and it. now last year, when we were here, you had showed us this new technology where you're kind of taking this exactly. concept yep. and making it mount. Ceiling mounts, exactly. Offering that uh, tilt adjustment. You can rotate your monitors, you can adjust them to the right angle so you can focus it to the listener. Um, so, you know, high speakers, uh, now we offer it with isolation as well. And we've adapted it to different monitors. So we've got different adapters depending on the whole pattern that a monitor has. Um, so, and, and we've now expanded also. We're collaborating with HEAD. Um, so the head monitors are now available as bundles with ISO Acoustics, and you're soon to see as well a collaboration with Focal with the uh, Trio 6 ST6 as well. So, you know, develop solutions specifically yeah. for these monitors. I, I know these guys, um, I'm seeing these in a lot of Atmos rigs. The Focal is really, oh, yeah. really going well in that market. So, so sure. the technology is kind of evolving from the idea to real world Real models. Exactly. Yeah. Expanding to more brands, absolutely. So more I'm models. sure yeah. every every year when we come back, there's going to be more and more 
uh, speaker aftermarket, not aftermarket, but uh, sure. speakers that's out there that we use that totally. are available for with this kind of a system. You got it. And it, it's uh, right now it can be confusing for customers too. You know what? How do I mount my monitors? You know, different monitors have different hold patterns. So we have a product selector on our website. You can choose your category for height speakers. It'll tell you uh, looking up your make and model what ISO acoustics brackets and adapters are required. So very, we, very we try to make it easy. Yeah, very cool. Very and cool. It, uh, yeah, it really makes a difference. If you've heard our ISO pucks, you know the the, the sound difference it makes, the clarity, yeah. the detail. Uh, this technology, when you're adapting it to a ceiling, connecting to a ceiling, uh, you know it's the difference is quite clear. Yeah, I, I, I remember the first time that I decouple the monitor. You know, that was something that didn't get talked about up until what, maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, it, it's right. in recent, fairly recent history. We just always put our monitors on top of our, our speaker bridge or, a mon you know, a meter bridge yeah. and we went went to work. That's and right. um, then all of a sudden, you know, that that wasn't good enough. And then, yeah. well, well, why? We heard the difference and I was like, oh. That's right. <laughs> the bottom end tightened up and That's some right. of those frequencies that we're building up in Flabby. Yeah. weren't flabby anymore so That's right. yeah I, re I i literally recommend this kind of a product to everyone um we maybe maybe we can't do everything we want to do to our room but this is the first big step for me in in getting the, the control room sounding great is the decoupling thing for sure you got great it. product man yeah thank you so well, much well sean thanks Absolutely. for letting us stop by buddy always a pleasure thank you What's up, everyone? We're at the Myberg booth. Andrew hey. Myberg. Hi. Uh, we've been following each other on uh, socials for a while. For a while. For a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I, I don't own one yet. Yeah, However, you make microphones. Yeah, I sure do. Well, let's talk about them. Um, this is the M1, our flagship mic that we released in 2020. Um, it's an old tube microphone um, based around an M7 capsule. But that's my, the, the, the M7, that's the original, like, That's Norman. the original um, U47 capsule. That right. they did in the original, and then they moved to the K47 yeah. um, after, okay. after that. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so a husky, husky well, full sound. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It has an M7 sound. Yeah, it's very. Yeah. It's 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 not. Uh, it's, it doesn't have a top uh, a bright top end. Let's put it that. Right, but it has right. a silky top end. In, yeah. In, in yeah. Terms of, um, yeah. So um, that's tube. It's it's all our own circuit design. Uh, obviously, also our own body designs. Um, and the main thing about this mic is it's super low noise. Um, other than that, and its frequency response, it has a beautifully flat frequency response, very upfront. Um, but the fact that it's so noiseless is um, you really notice then everything else. Um, and you really, it, it, it's, 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 it's actually quite a big difference between then uh, uh, another mic with the, with, the, with the same capsule in it from the same manufacturer even. It's, right. it's, it's quite Understood. a big difference. Understood. But you're not trying to copy anything. No, no, you, we you, didn't. Right. We actually, that's also, we wanted to do completely the opposite. We didn't want to copy anything because it's just, it just gets a bit boring after a while. Um, and there's been so many advances in technology since those first mics were, were actually released. Um, like I so said, we haven't reinvented the wheel. We've just updated like what technology has allowed us to do and circuit design yeah. has allowed us to do. We have a, a mutual friend that has one of these that has been on my case to uh, get one at yeah, yeah, Manny. Yeah, yeah Manny. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Well, tell us about product so number two. This is the M28. This is, uh, we did a soft launch last uh, last year at NAM. Um, had to redesign the body, unfortunately, due to a discontinued switch, but this is that's been done now. Um, this is a FET design, not a FET of the M1. It's its own, own design again. Um, it uh, is based around a CK12 capsule, which then obviously gives you a little bit more of a polished sound, if you want to call it, that it's got a slightly higher, more boosted top end. Yeah, a little more but, air. Yeah, exactly. Both of the both of the mics have low noise. Obviously, it's easier with the FET um, to accomplish that. Um, this mic has five will have five polar patterns um, and a fire at a six and twelve dB switch or pad. Um, this mic has, which I forgot about, has uh, variable polar patterns, okay. uh, which most microphones have these days, but it also has 100% cardioid or true cardioid built into the mic at the same time, which is on a switch on the power supply, which then bypasses the full polarity uh, knob. 
um, uh, I mean pot, when that's engaged, it switches off the rear membrane because obviously if you're using, if, you, if you're in that, at that cardioid, you would need the, the back to do the in, the in between um, uh, the, uh, the variable part, you know. Yeah. So that switches it off and it makes it what they call pure cardioid at the end of the day. Gives you about three to four dBs extra um, in output. Um, helps to break with like soft instruments if you've got a soft guitar part that you really want to get in front of and you can't put gain your preamp up anymore. It gives you a little bit more, a little bit more focused as well. Yeah. Also with soft vocal pieces, it's quite nice. Very it's nice. And where do you manufacture these? These get built in Berlin. In Germany. Okay, yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, they, they look great. I, lo I love the mount. Yeah, the swivel. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. The mount's cool. We've tried to keep that. We've even, on, on, the, on the new, um, I'll see if I can show you that, on the new switching thing uh, system, we've even recreated a little knob that looks like oh, that. Oh yeah, it, yeah. So it's, oh, yeah it's, it actually has a step switch in it yeah. because we couldn't find a quality switch that was quality enough to actually do what we wanted it to do in terms of not breaking soon. So yeah. we've got a little gray heel switch inside. They're firing, firing up, and that's the uh, and that's that a, that's a pad. That's At the a, moment, it says six. I mean, ten and twenty, but it'll be six and minus six and minus twelve. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, Andrew, thanks for giving us a, a little highlight. Yeah, thank a little you very rundown. much. Yeah, thank right, you thank, very much. Thank you, thanks man. For yeah. So we're here at Chefs with Scott. How are you? Fantastic. Marvelous. Good to hear it. Yeah. What do you have here? What are you going to show us? This is a uh, brand new. It's the. Desert Island Stereo Set Series. Okay. So, as you can see, tiny, smallest Pelly case uh, that they can find. And inside is a glorious match pair of Shep's microphones with the newer CMC1U bodies and a uh, series of capsules, cardioid, super cardio, your choice. So there's a series of sets. Comes with stand clamps and this lovely little case that fits in your pocket. Lovely. So there, they are tiny. They are. I do like that though, there, there's another company uh, I've, I've seen that makes smaller ones like this. And what's great about this size is you can get in into locations. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's great, it's the most modern amplifier, it's the newest amplifier design, so miniaturized. Right. Um, wonderful with uh, RF rejection. Some weight to it for the size in a good way. Yeah. How much are they for a pair? Uh, I think it's uh, 3400 for the pair. Match pair. Match pair of capsules comes with the factory certificate and all that. Beautiful. And uh, and these are available to order now. Uh, obviously the, uh, the all the dealers don't have the information yet, but they will. So what else yeah. have you got? You want to show us and show us well, also stuff what we have? have really is uh, something to mention for the students out there is Shep's now just brought out a student EDU program. Okay. So a mono mic, single microphone or a pair of microphones, uh, a student who qualifies, which will um, there's a section on the Shep's website to fill out, and uh, once the credentials are confirmed they'll be able to buy a Shep's single microphone or pair at a significant discount. Okay, marvelous. Which is, it's a new program, Shep, we've always talked about how to do something for the educational purpose, so this is uh, what we settled on, and it's probably gonna be pretty wonderful for people who wanna get into Shep's at the student level. Amazing. Yeah. Now, I think most people will know Shep's as kind of a, you know, industry standard when it comes to production sound. Absolutely. Um, I actually found these were really, really good for overheads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had a pair on a record a few years ago, and they they were overheads. Actually, it was actually the first Frey record. Yeah, I mean, we hear stories from all the professionals out there of using a pair of uh, the Shep's CMITs for music recording of all types. So. It's because you want something that's really an accurate view of the drum kit in a room or any kind of acoustic instrument. I mean, they're designed to be completely yeah. neutral and accurate. Yeah, I mean, one of the major points of what makes Shep so good is how they deal with off-axis, you know, uh, sound and how linear the response is, which is sort of that uh, thing that really separates, sets them apart from, yep. from the rest When of I the first world. moved to LA, to make extra money, I did production sound work. Yeah. yeah. So I was using Shep's anyway, like this, yeah. every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what else have you got? Uh, the usual uh, smattering, I mean, these are sort of the Colette system um, complete, so amplifiers, which yep. there's five standard amplifiers now, depending on how you're going to use them with different output connectors, either limos or disconnects. Um, this one has a magnetic, magnetic back for plant yep. miking, so you get a little uh, nice. accessories. So yeah, I'll give you an idea, it would just be... 
That's yeah. great. There's no capsule on it, but you can get, but get the idea. Yeah. And there's uh, also some uh, angled, 45 degree angle, little yeah. adapters to, to put on there, which is nice. That's great. Uh, CMC6, a classic amplifier from years ago, is still available. Um, these are just uh, active accessories. And, uh, and here is uh, the lovely capsule display of all the different Omnis, cardioids, super cardioids. What is this? That's the glorious V4U. Ah. So the concept behind this was is to take a classic look of Shep. So the third sure. microphone Shep's ever made okay. in the early 50s, uh, the CMV51 had this head grill. And it just was so cool and unique. Um, Shep's decided to uh, make a a new modern microphone with uh, with a design. It looks ideas amazing. of that. Yeah, so completely un unique mic in many ways. The amplifier is unique. It's a completely symmetrical output. Um, <coughs> high, you know, five volt output at this. Pretty, pretty amazing sound. And inside the head, it's not a large diaphragm. It's still a Shep's low, small diaphragm capsule. Yeah. But it has a acoustic ring around it, which expands the pressure effect of the microphone like a large diaphragm would. So it's really a best of both worlds. So you get some of the, the characteristics that you would from a large diaphragm, but maintaining the things that make a small diaphragm great. Super fast transients, but a little extra warm. Yeah, and the polar pattern is just wonderful throughout the whole frequency range and becomes gradually more directional when you get into the higher higher range. And they're able to tailor that and make that sound. So it's a lovely vocal microphone for looks in the sure. studio. Um, but honestly, this can, like any chefs, can be used on any instrument pickup and stereo pairs and How everything. How much is it? Uh, good question. <laughs> It's, uh, it's like 2300 bucks or something. It's yeah. really a, a complete bargain when you think about it. It's amazing. It's gorgeous looking, yeah. Yeah. Great. It comes in gray as well. And anybody who wants to, for a little extra charge, you can get it in any color on the RAL you know, color chart. So I'm, you see them in that. red and yellow and pink and whatever you want yeah. to get. It's pretty, uh, It's fun. Marvelous. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Nice to you. Good morning, Warren. Good morning, Dave. How the devil are you? I am excellent. Thanks. Not marvelous? This might be one of the most favorite NAMs I've had in a long time, just because it feels more like a real NAM show than the last couple of years. Um, yeah, it's been a bit, of, uh, a bit a bit confused the last couple of years. How about that? Well, you know, people don't want to get on planes. Some people can't fly from where they were coming from, from your, out of the country. Uh, vendors can't get parts or they couldn't get availability, so how can they possibly go to a show and show something new that they can't get it, you know, they can't deliver it and, you know. Well, we've decided uh, that NAM will never die because everybody in Europe is at the moment, well, there's a gentleman there from Krakow, what is it, like minus 50 at the moment and snowing? So, basically, the Europeans will never let it die because we just want to get on a plane and get the heck out of Europe and come here where it's like, you know, 900 degrees in January. Yeah, well, you know, the, uh, the Airbnb that we have, you have to like pay if you want the pool heated. And I said, yeah, I want the pool heated. She's like, you know, it is like only 60 to 75 degrees. I'm like, it's it's warm. I, I'm from New England. It's at home when I left. It was 18 degrees when I left my house. Like, so, you know, California weather's never lost on me. Um, in fact, if I had to do it over again, I might do it out here. But, you know, I think being that we came from New England, where there wasn't like record labels, giant studios, uh, you know, the closest... But you pay a million dollars for a shoebox. That's yeah. the only thing. Well, that's You're like, it. here's your warehouse. That was a million. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, we have 28,000 square feet, and... Uh, God bless Boston area. And, yeah. you know, it, it's still... It's not cheap, okay, but... But I know what you mean. Uh, that said, um, you know, what we've been doing here at the show is talking to people like yourself that have an impact on, on music, both uh, as producers and engineers, and in your case, as as the leader of our community and culture. In, in the I didn't world. pay him to say that. But, 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 but Warren, but you know, you. I, I think your, your ability to ask people great questions and dig into who they are in their spaces or, you know, and, and just, just... I think it's just because I'm probably like everybody out here. I just got a mic, I just have the microphone. Because I, I want... I was talking to this about the sort of rise of how, you know, during the pandemic, four billion music YouTube channels started. And 
the good ones, the ones that you know people care about, are the ones that people actually are passionate and love music, rather than going, hey, this is a business. Seems like a good way to make some money. Yeah, you know, you've got to actually love music. I think Dave said when I interviewed him, he's like, if you're in this for the money, you, you, it's not going to work. You've got to make money as a consequence of right. loving and working hard at what you do. Well, you know, talking to Young Guru, talking to Baines, talking to a lot of the people that are up here behind me over the last two days, um, two things struck me. And one of them was that for Osberg, this brand that we've built over the last 25 plus years, uh, the one thing that a lot of people said is the word, um, I said, what, you know, what do you think the most important thing is? And about you know our speaker they go it's emotion and then I said well what's the most important thing about music and it's emotion you know sure. and I, I've never met anybody in our industry that also <coughs> was successful that wasn't absolutely passionate and persistent and and I think I think the people that we know who are at the best of their craft um, have, have have not let anything get in their way right they just yeah, yeah. get in do what you have to do do it the next day and the next day be available, always be ready uh, for that call. And you know, you've had a couple of those calls. Like, hey, can you do this record tomorrow? Can you start now? I have to have it in on by Tuesday. Uh, the, one I, the one I used to get all the time was the, uh, we've done the album with a really, really famous producer. I, this has probably happened 50 times. We've this really famous guy, but we don't have a single. But we have $4,000 left and we need four songs written, recorded, produced, and can we play all the instruments? That sounds like a high budget. I, yeah, exactly. I gotta, I gotta talk to the right people. When I'm yeah. You know, they've spent half a million dollars with Fred Famous, but they don't have the single yet. Yeah, yeah we it's still a lot of that. But that's that, that always sort of worked out to a benefit, you know? It well, is what it is. You know, so, so what we've been doing here with these guests coming through is to hear a little bit, and I wanna turn the table a little on you, Warren, because I wanna ask you about your process as, as a producer and as an engineer, just I want to, you know, a, I'm curious to hear some things that you, you might be able to share with the broader group of things that are the most valuable things that you, or things you love about productions that you've done, and maybe we could take a listen and hear them on this variety of cool colored speakers, whatever these are, these are. These are. This I do love your color schemes. Yeah. I, I, will, I will admit to that, yeah. It's rather, rather lovely. They not only sound amazing, they also look the part. So well, good. Congratulations on caring about everything. I do care about everything. And, and you know, some people think like business is business, this isn't personal. Uh, and for me, it's 100% personal. In fact, it ties into something. You know, you use any AI in your work today? I mean, yes okay. and no. So, you know what I mean? Every, everybody's hot for AI. Do you want AI to cook you dinner? Not really. You know, do you want to go to bed with AI? Not really. Do you want AI flying a plane for you? So it already does. So there you go. Mm, well, um, so, but the point I'm really is, into flying, so you, you may not have wanted to open that. My, all my companies like Spitfire, Hurricane, Lancaster, Wellington. Yeah. So you don't want to open the flying sorry, conversation. Sorry. Let's, let's I, have I was, a seat. I was, in, I was in a hotel room 135 nights last year, so I, I've been on my own tour, right? Uh, tuning, tuning speakers all over the world. But the thing I was trying to lead to is that kind of one of the things about Osberger as a brand is that we use this other technology, and that technology has actually been responsible for every is? every invention, every everything we've come to know, and it's a, it's a technology that we build into every Osberger and every studio we design. It's called HI, and when you combine it with AI, that's also pretty interesting, but HI is... <coughs> human intelligence and so every every system every studio we design we put human intelligence into it you know hundreds of years of innovation and creativity and care is what makes us special i think and so hi is part of our our kind of who we are statement um but we we do combine it with ai and you know it's ai by hi so it's i high technology so you know if you want to feel the right way you can use the combination of AI and HI. So that said, tell, t tell us a little about the, the track you, you you asked Sam to pull up and what it's all about. I think we, how to save a life, yeah, first. So whenever I go into a new studio that I've never been in before, 
obviously you can listen to some of your favorite tracks, which, which helps. Reference tracks like Bocclear Mountains, Women in Chains is still my favorite mix ever. But what I always do is play like the last four or eight bars of How to Save a Life because it's only the drums that I recorded at my old studio that I had for 15 years. And there's no lexicon reverbs and there's no drum samples on it. So it's like just the sound that I know really, really well that I had recorded. And I can go into any studio, any set of speakers, play it and go, oh, this sounds good. Oh, that doesn't sound anything like the way it's supposed to sound. So we're going to have a live review of my tuning of these different speakers. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, we're going to see how, how, how close I, it actually I, I like sounds that. to my 15 years of knowledge of this room. Uh, you know, this room, and we, it was with we my did drum a lot kit. of acoustic treatments around here. Actually, there are some acoustic treatments hidden around here. These, these wall panels are actually helping contain our area a little bit. You'd be surprised if you go on the outside of them that you don't hear as much, but they're they're basically gobos made by Joe Kavi with all our you know artwork on them. And, but they do a good job. But let's hear what you got to uh, tell, tell us about it. Well, I mean, it's uh, Sam actually, the gentleman sitting over there, everybody. Say hello to Sam. Hi, Sam. He was actually my engineer for how many years? Five or six. Five or six years. So he, he knows exactly what we're talking about here because we were we, well we did Aerosmith in there for like nine months or something so we did a lot of tracking in that room so he knows it very very well well, you know, Sam told me that for the first year he, he, he knew you, he got one hour of sleep, actually. You got that much? <laughs> uh, he'd call me and say, like, Dave, thanks for hooking me up with Warren and Jack Douglas, but you, you didn't tell me I didn't have, I, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> but actually, you know, it's, like, it's a great tie-in, actually, to Sam. Just one little note, Sam uh, Martin is the chief engineer now at, at Osberger, and he tests every system, puts every little bit together, and he's doing it from a guy who could you know, be Warren Hewitt's engineer. So he's doing it from and a Jax musical. Well. What's that? And Jax. And Jax. Yeah. Well. You know, and so we're, and almost everybody in the chain that's got their ears on these speakers and, and tuning them are engineers. They're coming from our, our world. Yeah, know? exactly. And so, anyway, I just, it's a cool thing that we have this. Well, I'm going to have to, you have to play it, but I'm going to have to put the microphone down because we're speaking through the speakers. Well, we, we don't, don't want to. We'll just turn it off. But roll it out. So, yeah, turn the white speakers off, correct? Yep. No, no, you, the, everything works. We got. We have the, we okay, have good. the technology. Give it. Let's start with the red guys. Let's we'll start with. Turn the, it off. Before we go any further, can you put on the, the, the dual weights and, and just roll the same track? Because now, now that I know, you know, someone is listening um, and, and, and actually knows you were standing in the room when you tracked those things. So, you know, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get a real re review on this from my wine. I got a seat. Don't move. One more time on the <laughs> on the silvers. Yeah, the the, uh, the silvers is the anniversary model. That's a four-way system that uses the uh, the newly released TAD ET703A, and that goes out to 45k. And we're using no EQ on the horn or the uh, high-frequency compression driver to achieve a very flat response. Um, the horn crossed over 900 roughly, and so it goes. This whole system goes from 20 hertz to 45k.
tell me, good news, bad news. <laughs> you played the wrong song. No, no, no. No, so it's interesting. I, the characteristics of these two are almost identical. You know, obviously that there's the sub on this is ridiculous. I actually was most satisfied by the low end listening to the little ones. Sorry, I'm, I'm ruining it for him. He's like, no, 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 no this is like the most expensive. The, the, the low end on the on, on those is insane. It's 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 pretty remarkable. You probably sell bucket loads of those, I would imagine. Well, we 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 do, and you know, obviously, as you get into a bigger system and a and no room. Well, there's more there's more connection as you go up, so that's that's a little bit disconnected with the super low lows underneath, but very satisfying. And I can imagine a lot of you know EDM and hip hop guys, pop guys, love those because they love being in a room where they can really feel it. You know, uh, I imagine. For mastering guys, the big system is probably pretty tasty. Well, this is actually a unique piece. This is a little bit different than the sound of these two because it's all TAD components, right. which have a slightly more extended range, but at the same sure. time, slightly softer in the way that they hit. But they're very revealing, and the more time you spend with sure. them, you know, as yeah, a mixing that, speaker. That makes sense for, for a master, one say for a mastering guy, the detail across, you know, 20 to 20 was much bigger. Well, and the interesting thing is, that you know, we make version of that with that. These are all our, our proprietary drivers, and they definitely the bottom end driver can go a lot deeper and harder on right. on these uh, on the drivers we're using in our standard series. But you know, this this other system is an ultra bandwidth system, 20 to 45k, very flatly tuned. This has a little bit more life to it, and and I think positioning wise, as we if you look at room positioning. You know, we yeah. have these two speakers that are kind of closer. Hey, hey, I'm glad to hear what you're saying because this speaker is our, our our least expensive speaker, and yet it's a very satisfying feeling when you. How much is up. least expensive? How much are? Well, if you bought them without the subs, they so you kind of you can get them a couple different ways. This is 11 grand with one amp and a pair of speakers. Okay? Yeah. And then that's in matte black. That's not a special color like this. Okay. Is. And then the sub adds. You you can have one sub. And that becomes about 15 grand, and you get two amps that allows you to add a, a second sub if you want. That gets a 17.5, and then you get a, st a pair of stands for 1,500 bucks, and those can be any height to fit your console position. Right. And we always focus on, you know, the ear height, the distance that you're listening at, has a lot to do with where you want the speaker positioned, and also other objects you might have if you have sure. other near fields or whatever. Um, you know, and then when you get to what you see here with the Ferrari red, this is, you know, the Ferrari color to the T with the, you know, uh, Mine would have to be Aston Martin, I'm just sorry. <laughs> we, we, we did appear on Aston Martin Sky Gray Metallic for Alicia Keys years ago. Uh, All British Racing Green. I haven't done any British Racing Green, but... What? Do we do any green speakers ever? Yes, we did. A, there's a pair in Brazil. Yeah, there's a Brazilian, oh yeah, we did a slime green. <laughs> slime green, the, the room hasn't opened yet, but it's, it's a, uh, what's the guy's name? Pushaisti? Somebody. I, I trust know. you. I'm just gonna say, uh, the color thing adds a little bit. That's, this is 22,000 as you see. Well listen, I, I'd like to listen to it's, uh, it's the here. Trevor Hall song, because uh, I reference this one because, or well, this whole album, He's an independent artist. Um, I don't know what's he got. He's got like one and a half, two million monthly listeners every month. This song he's about to play has got like 89 million plays, and he's an independent artist. And we recorded it at our old studio um, and mixed it in a hybrid fashion on the SSL. And I spent more time and care on this vocal than any other vocal I've ever done because there's so much stuff where it's just an acoustic guitar or you know just a droning instrument playing so it's for me it's the other test song that I always do because for speakers because the vocal should be sitting sort of here you know, to me, the, a great vocal, like a Bob Clear Mountain vocal, is always like a ball of energy in the front that you kind of pick up and balance, you know. And so I tried really, really hard on this to get it, so... Sounds cool. I'm, the, I'm worried. I've just given it a big setup. I'm always going to be like, God, that sounds like total poop. I've, I've always liked them as an artist, so it's, it's cool to know yeah. your own history with it because we'll get that, we'll get that, and, and, and you know, 
We won't have a, a triple dredge session this time. We'll just, you know. Did, did we you know, this? He, did he you loves this the red speakers. So just, we'll start on these red speakers, Sam. And oh, you did the next one. You did the next one. Which is also another phenomenal. We'll start, on, yeah. start on the red speakers since he loves them. We love them too. It's from that album. Yeah. Is, is that the one you played? Yeah. Um, let me go to Play it again? Chapter, oh. First song, right? Try it. Oh. No, it's, it's the biggest song on the oh, album. So I'm if you, sorry. I think it's this one here, yeah. Okay. Yep. Don't be afraid to crank it. We spent two years on that speaker, just getting the voice right. And it's so malleable, too. Uh, unbelievable. How was that for you? It's good, because there was a lot of listening that went into that, a lot of not doing very much. I, I, love, <laughs> I love the mix, actually. Thank you. It's, it's like, it's, it's, uh, where's my wife? It's my wife's drum kit. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's just, and, and it's just a, as you can see, like a floor tom and like almost nothing. And you have to have the sound of the room and just a boom. And I could hear all of the air off of the, the, the bottom head. Yeah. And the way it like expands and, as, you know, that. And it's a stand up bass. I think it was Dan Rothschild playing bass. Could, could you add that to my tuning list? Um, you know, I'm always looking for tracks, okay? Because every, so tuning is a really interesting thing because we can shape and change so much about the way the response is because these horns have 110 dB sensitivity. So we're never looking for more power. We have, in most tunings, we have 40 dB of headroom on the horn. So the, the chances of blowing it are almost, I mean, almost impossible. It's almost infinite, okay? But this year we had somebody blow one um, because they had a customer and I can't really mention the artist, but they were playing for 40 hours straight in the studio. 40 hours of their music being produced. And so it's getting louder, full and louder, no, full blast louder. the entire time. But when we looked up and said, hey, when was the last time we had changed a high frequency driver for a client out of the 1500 systems we have worldwide that people aren't very gentle with our speakers, by the way, I'm just mentioning that. But we had the last one before that was 2018. So good job. That's pretty. It's pretty cool. You that, know? That, that's a good average. Yeah. So that there's a lot of headroom. There's a lot of clarity and openness. And I could hear, for me, you know, I'm always interested in how people listen and understanding. Let's say how your ears are interpreting what we just heard there. So. Well, know. I mean, you can. I'm sure everybody can hear from across the speakers. I mean, I. 
there is no low resonance in his voice. It is like completely structured. To me, the greatest vocal sound outside of anything Bob Claremont and mixed is anything Peter Gabriel sings. Peter Gabriel, because he has that ah in his voice. And I, I, has anybody heard the new album, the new IO album? Yeah, the chord. Oh. The chord which, which version of the chord? Both. Does? Both, yeah, whether just... it's Chad's or Spike's. I mean, and you know, people know it's how in our, it's in our playlist. Yeah, you know how he records. Actually, that... he doesn't wear headphones. He records in a room with the speakers blasting. That's the same as Bruce Springsteen. We did his studio, and they had to be three stations around the studio with NS10s facing him. And so Toby was on one side of the console. There was no control room. They, they're facing each other, but NS10s facing each other. And he would put the, the pair facing Bruce out of phase so he could take it out of the track later. There's only so much you can do, though. Yes. I, I've, I've done it many times. I mean, but, but the point is, is like, it, it's that... That was a benchmark for me, Peter Gabriel's vocal, because I wanted to hear body and vocal. I want to hear the presence, for want of a better word, of the low end, but nothing that would interfere. So when you hear that tom go, boom, it just rings, rather than all that kind of, you know, two or three hundred for the vote. It, it was a lot, a labor of love. I couldn't just slap five plugins on it and hope for the best, you know. Let's put two on and everything will be great. No, it had, it had to be like, going in there, like so much detail work. Well, you know, one of the interesting things that, about what you just said about actually going into the plugin or going into the thing and working on it, today a lot of people have shifted into this press a template button or press a, a setting and it's like, okay, that sounds pretty good instead of actually digging in and doing Which that. Sometimes it does though, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, I, I just love hearing that you're actually still in, when you're working on something like that, that you're digging that deep into I it. I think automation is, is still, automation is still the best thing. Even if you're using an AI-ish something or other, getting in and automating it, whatever is always going to be, take it to the next level. And with, um, with Trevor, who's I'm a very even singer anyway, it was really just getting in there and taking syllables and turning them up, turning them down, making sure everything was hitting evenly at all times. It was a big deal. Um, it, it sounds phenomenal. It's interesting with that track, and it would be a good one for you for, because it, it translates really well across all three speakers. Well, and of course, when you got to the big speaker, in a way, th this young woman in the middle, it, it, she's actually in the sweet spot for the... I, uh, I kept thinking, should I get up and walk around? Get to, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. It, it is definitely a, a spot to hear the big speakers, yeah. that, that row, because the distance of them apart uh, also relates to where the low frequency and the high frequency all come together perfectly. This speaker, by the way, you can sit one foot from it and it will come together as one thing. This speaker, it's about three feet. That speaker is really like two meters before it even does anything. But when we look at how we should be listening, we want to be inside a pretty, a pretty good equilateral triangle, but we want to be on the inside of it, not with our nose at the equilateral triangle. A lot of times when I go to tune speakers, I see people have their near fields or they have their, their even their mids or mains pointed more at like between their monitor and their face. And once I open that up and bring it back so that it's here, the focus, then suddenly you're inside the music, not, and these are these are omnidirectional, but they have like rear rejection. So this, this microphone likes to have, you know, sound, you know, aimed all around it, not just, at one point in the time. Well, we all hear so differently, don't we? I've, I've done, over the years, I've had all the, you know, measure the Pinay, and St Stephen Slate's a good friend, and he he's really obsessed with that stuff now. That's what he wants to bring to the next level in all of his technology, you know, on headphones and stuff. Because I hate low mids. There's certain speaker, speakers, and I, I don't want to talk bad about any company, because something that I don't like, somebody else might love, but, I mean, Sam knows, if I went to a studio with at least the old school Adam speakers, I'd be like, because they have like a little bit of a low mid bump. And I hate that because I already hate the 350 area anyway. I'm always scooping the little extra out. So I, I need a speaker that is speaking in across the board, but doesn't get stodgy. That's a very English word, stodgy. It doesn't get like gluey yeah, in the low mids and I'm sitting there for hours trying to figure it out because if you've got enhancement in that area, it's a waste of time for me. You know, I need that to be flat as a bleeding pancake. And these did. 
That, the vocal was the thing because I, recently this work for me was because as a song was because I had sculpted those low mids so much to make sure they fit to let all the other instruments breathe. Even that drone, you know, sitting that in there. So much detail work with like automating EQs and stuff like that that it showed on every single speaker. So right, thank you. So much. Well, you made me I, look I, good. Hey, I'm at the Apogee booth with our buddy George hey. here from Apogee. We all know Apogee. We love Apogee. Yeah. You guys have. Gosh, you were like maybe the original like great converter. You did yeah. right. I mean, yeah. I like to say that we're you know as hipster as it sounds. We were into digital audio before digital audio was cool. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, you, we've you, been doing that since 1985 all the way to present day. Uh, around Nashville, I can tell you for example, we still see Apogee like I mean like old Apogee products still being used. Oh, you yeah. know what? They still sound great. You're yeah. right. I mean, yeah. a lot of times like even like one of my favorites is every time I talk to someone with a Rosetta, they're like. Dude, I have an Apogee Rosetta, and I'm never getting rid of it. Something about the way it treats the mid-range for guitar stuff. People just love it, absolutely. Yeah. Well, do you guys have anything new to talk about this year? Well, absolutely. Right now, we are looking at the Symphony Mark II Special Edition. We have these guys decked out with the new 16x16 16 16 SE cards. And this is really, truly the latest and greatest from our company, all the way from 1985 till now. We've been really trying to optimize to make sure that these interfaces are able to be as punchy, as musical, as accurate, as transparent as possible all combining to be something that you can trust as a mixing tool at your fingertips. The Mark II is really well equipped for that. These guys not only have awesome I.O. capabilities, are totally modular, so you can choose things like Dante or HDX or Thunderbolt, but we've done a lot of work over the last couple of years completely re-engineering it. So the Mark II of today is kind of reinvented around 2022, back when we did our huge software update. And you'll notice that a lot of the computers we're showcasing with it are all running using Atmos. I see that. So one of the big things that we're showing in this show is kind of our new approach to this. So people have been doing Atmos mixing for years and years and years, but a lot of it really evolved and revolved around post-production. For people that are getting into doing Atmos for music mixing, the Mark II is really an ideal pairing, especially with its Thunderbolt connectivity. Reason being is that this allows us to take a different approach with it where we can actually build into Symphony Control what we call monitor workflows. So one of the most kind of common things that you might need to do as a mixing engineer is be able to check out your 7.1.4 mix against stereo, against 5.1, against mono. This allows us to kind of seamlessly be able to fold those formats down, deliver to different speakers in different ways. And heck, if you're not doing Atmos, it's also a really great strategy to be able to do like an ABC monitor pair as well and really easily be able to control it either using your hardware remote or doing it inside of internal software. Okay, so you do have a you have a remote. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay, cool. Yeah, so if you're a touch-based guy and you wanna get on the knob and crank it or be able to dim your monitors at a real quick glance, it's great for that. If you're more on the box, you wanna stay in there, totally allowed as well. Really the key thing is this is allowing us to just map any of these buttons so you have quick access to it. And one of the things we've really integrated with in the last six months is if you've been doing any serious work with Atmos, a lot of people are really upset that they don't have a good solution for reference monitoring, right? So commonly, if you're doing a stereo mix, you wanna see what your mix sounds like versus what is the commercially viable kind of uh, analogy to it, right? right? So what's really neat is that with Ginger Audio, we not only have some additional features that help out the symphony and being able to deal with any monitor in combination with Atmos, but it allows us to do things like our room correction, bass management, speaker delays and compensation, and my favorite, being able to map Apple Music to be able to play back spatial audio files so you can reference your Atmos mix versus the commercially viable version for a great reference monitoring well, solution. That is really clever. I like that. I, I, I haven't done the Atmos jump yet, <laughs> but I'm close. Yeah. I'm really, really close. Still trying to figure out you know, monitor controlling and uh, conversion and whatnot, so. You know, you are amongst many in that yes, regard, right? Everyone knows they need to do Atmos, but the second that the monitor controller gets in the way, it's like, whoop, maybe yeah. I'll think about that another day. So really what we've done with Mark II is tried to eliminate the monitor controller. We've tried to make it so we build in the functionality so users can do it from this interface, Thunderbolt-based symphony, plus a computer that can take in that Thunderbolt connection and a DAW like Logic or these days even Avid Pro Tools has the Dolby renderer built right into it yep. with a little bit of corrective software like Sonarworks or like Ginger Audio. You've got the complete package. It's way less expensive and it's way easier to do it. We've been calling this plug and play Atmos and let me tell you, 
with schools that are trying to learn how to teach this, yeah. with users that are getting into it for music mixing. This takes a lot of the sophistication out of it so you can get down to doing what we care about, which is making incredible music that gives us the tingles. Well, yeah, because there's a learning curve to the creative part of it. Totally. So I really don't want a learning curve. On the <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just being honest. No, I, I totally know I've done about six, seven at most mixes, and I still know I have a ways to go in learning that. I don't want to learn other stuff, you know, so I understand Absolutely. what you're saying precisely. So, well, you know, if they're good enough for Bob Claremont, they're, they're <laughs> good enough for me, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, with Ginger Audio, that partnership is going to allow anyone that's got a Mark II that they bought to get that software at 50% off. Again, making it more economical and easier to get into this format and not have to jump through hurdles and additional tech problems to then manage. Understood, understood. Well, thanks for giving us the rundown, Absolutely. George. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you. What's up? I'm at the Empirical Labs booth with the man, Dave Durr. That's hey, a seat, Mr. Man. Distresser himself. <laughs> you don't look overly distressed, though. Uh, uh, those years are back. Well, those years are behind you? Yeah, yeah, cool. So we're looking for the up years. So. There you go. Well, I mean, everybody knows and loves everything you do, that's for sure. But I understand you Not have some... my wife. No, oh, well, that's true. I understand that. I understand that. But you have something new to show us, I think. Uh, this yeah. Is a line. Well, you know, uh, most of our stuff is over $1,000, um, which is prohibitive to some people. Sure. So we wanted to make something that was more affordable, like half price, half of our normal price. Places, and yet really versatile and sounded great. So we've, we've done 500 modules before. Mm -hmm. So we put together a 500 module that can do a lot of what the distressor does. That's awesome. Uh, we call it pump. Um, oh, I see it right here. Yeah, we got six here and we have a couple over here. Oh, okay, so you can get it, okay. It can be horizontal or vertical. All right. But we have uh, eight ratios like the distressor. Okay. And we have uh, one feature, uh, normal attack and release, obviously. But we have one feature the distressor does not have, uh, and that is at mod, which we actually took from our software compressor. So unlike what you usually do, you go from a hardware to a software emulation. In this case, we went from a software uh, feature to a hardware feature. Uh, it was very easy to do, fortunately. Right. But it adds a uh, front edge attack. You know, you get this a lot more of the smack or spank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, very cool. Uh, and uh, again, it's like six, seven hundred dollars. Okay, so it, I was going to ask U.S. dollars, six, seven hundred in that range. Yeah, that's be, that'll be the purchase price. Yeah, you know, so list price is seven nine, uh, six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. So be, everybody can look up Sweetwater and call their dealer and get them, get themselves hooked up. So if they can't have that. Maybe they can afford that. And, and even if you have this, um, this is a slightly different color, especially yeah. with the app mod control. Um, the app mod adds this, an element of attack. It's hard, very hard to describe, but it's easy to hear. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to demo one. We'll, yeah, we'll, you know, yeah, we'll have to do that. Give us a buzz. I'd put it on the channel. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. the guys would like to see a walkthrough. Awesome. Well, Dave, thanks for showing us what's new. Thank I know you, you have a meeting to get to, so we'll let you go. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, I'm with Derek at, at Vanguard. How you doing, Derek? I'm uh, tired. It's Saturday have, at NAMM. Have you had a good show? I have. Uh, I was ready to leave about 11 o'clock on Thursday, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a lot. It's a, Our feet, we were just talking, <laughs> very painful. Very painful. It's well, let's awful. Talk, let's talk about your product line because yeah. I honestly, I, I'm very familiar with the name, but I've not used any of your products to this point. So We'll fix that. Yeah, exactly. So fill me in. I'm a newbie wanting to know about your products. Fill me in. Yeah, so our thing is we are original. We're not doing clones. I think there's plenty of 47s and 251s out there and plenty of people doing that well. Yeah. So our thing is instead of putting the tint shade of green on your color palette, we want to put together a microphone that gives you a brand new shade. So we want to sound like a Vanguard. So people always ask me, does it sound more like a C12 or an 87? I'm like, no, it sounds like us, what we think a record should sound like. So when it comes to originality, it's a little harder. So our products come out a little slower because it takes time, but we're really proud of it. So we do things like we modified the stereo mic to be darn near indestructible as opposed to if you've ever used like an SM69, go for it. <laughs> I, I do, I have a video where I whack it against the side of my desk, you know? <laughs> This is bald bearings and detinted. If you turn that, that goes out to 120 degrees. 
It'll do X, Y, Blumline, Midside. Oh, nice. All yeah. in one microphone because that is... each capsule is independently switchable. I like that. You know? I like All that. All the way down to on the splitter box, it's got a top inverted phase out. So you can do Midside with just three cables. You can run uh, channel bolts and do A, B comparisons. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. And there's a splitter box for it. So, Very nice. Um, you know, even down to our shock mounts, I hate spider shock mounts. I think they're like so outdated. And the stuff that holds up your underwear is holding up your $5,000 microphone. <laughs> and we know how long this stuff lasts. Yeah, right? uh, three years, yeah. two years maybe. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then you've got a microphone doing this, you yeah. know, or with a bent head because I hit the floor. So we have six jet engine O-rings. The guy that supplies these to me supplies them to Boeing as well. And then the shock mounts have the open face, yeah. and we're really proud of that because a bunch of companies have copied it since, and we went, okay, we did something right. Well, that is that is a really good shock mount. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's all metal except for the pivot because the pivot needs to clamp, right? So uh, that I, is well, ABS. I, I will admit a, a dissatisfaction with the, a lot of my, I may like the mic, but I'll admit a dissatisfaction with positioning it and getting yes. it to stay. Yeah. You know, and I that, mean, the triad orbit ball mounts help a lot. Well, as well. but I'm not even yeah. using that. I'm just yeah. using this. So. Well, it's because they do metal on metal. They say oh, it's an all metal shock mount. Yeah, but the well, problem with an all metal shock mount is you run into the metal doesn't catch with the other metal. So when you have the plastic that bends in, you fixed it. Yeah. So that's plastic and the rest of it is metal. Gotcha. So, yeah. Um, we also do things like this. So this and this are the same mic. This comes with four small diaphragm capsules. And then it also comes optionally with a large diaphragm head. So this will turn your pencil mic into a large diaphragm side address. Oh, no, that, that's clever. It's made of aircraft aluminum, so it doesn't take your mic stand down. Oh, yeah. It's quite light. And then it also switches between cardio and non -mute. Oh, I didn't even we see that. We were just talking about room mics. So yeah. Nobody else is really doing this sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. And then I've always wanted to make a tube stereo microphone. Couldn't for a long time. And then Neutrik came out with a 10-pin XLR connector. And I said, I know exactly what I want to do with this. So we made the V24 that uses Bees Knees CK12, historically accurate capsules, a GE five-star tube, cinematic transformers. We built 10 of them, and they're gone, so we got to build a few more. That's nice. all done by hand in California. Nice. Then the other thing we do is, is, is this all also our have the, oh yeah. Exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. All our microphones are hand-built. The final assembly goes on in our shop in Montclair, California, up the road. Okay. And then uh, we do 100% quality control. Every single mic that goes out is listened to. It has a little card with a serial number signed by one of the techs so you know who to kick in the balls if your mic stops working. You know? nice. so, yeah, we just try and do innovative stuff. So this is the Gen 2. We're finally Gen 2-ing the V1s. And then this is the V14 we're introducing this year. That's the mono version of this. And we're gonna do a two voltage sag pot on the power supply. So, so this has a CK12 style capsule. Yes. So that means probably gonna be kind of an airy microphone. Yes and Detailed. no. Because the C24 actually has the 251 high end roll off in it. So we made it switchable. C12, 251 on the ah, top. Ah, nice. Per capsule. This so one rises has, to like what 7k, and then this one, up. this one's minus three at about 12k. Okay. And then this one, we've actually made three-way, so this one's minus three at about seven and a half. So very tailorable. Yes. We'll call it. All right, nice. Yeah. Uh, this capsule is it all original or is it? Uh, this is yeah. So this is our voicing of a capsule. This is this is a more, much more affordable capsule. We get this one done overseas, but it's the only one like it. Okay. So very nice. It's our voicing. We did specific things to the backplate and the mylar to make it ours, and it sounds like a Vanguard. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, Derek, thanks for giving us a rundown, man. Thanks, appreciate man. it. I appreciate it. Hey, go sit down and take care of those feet. <laughs> you too. All right, all right. What's up, everyone? Day three, I'm with Wojtek from Hum Audio. Hope you're doing marvelously well. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Now, I haven't heard of Hum Audio. Uh, many people that haven't. And, and you're uh, manufactured in Poland? Manufactured in Poland, just like yours truly. Uh, with distribution in the United States and in, uh, East Coast, Connecticut. Uh, we tend to make things that other companies don't. Why reinvent a wheel if it's going to come around anyway? So. Right, right, right. So this currently, this is our crown jewel analog look-ahead limiter. And yes, you heard me right. It's analog look ahead. Yeah, that's that's because that's of the use of band only thing. For, it's, no yeah. it's not digital delay line because we use a bandpass filters. We managed to achieve 0.2 milliseconds delay, and the detector is side chain to it. 
So people ask me, what's the attack time, Ali? It's negative two or negative three. Right, right. On top of that, uh, the bandpass filters, they're actually, they do really great things for the sound itself. So you have an option of hard bypassing the limiter, which takes it completely out of the chain, or just bypassing the limiting part of it. So it still runs through the, through the rest of the circuitry. Uh, you can engage the transformers in and out. It has a stereo with circuits. And on top of that, we have that thing called the dynamic transient, which is, it's quite unique circuit because what it does, a lot of times when you limit, it tends to take away the top end. Okay. In certain cases, not all the time, but uh, by, enga by engaging that, it, in, it introduces a high shelf EQ that jumps up proportionally to the amount that you live it. Okay. So if you notice there's something missing, you engage it. Add a little it. air back into it. Little, yeah. Little life. Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Uh, all, all on switches. You know, so it's a yeah, it's a serious toy, and uh, people love it. Anything we need to know about the inside, uh, the topography, the so I heard you say transformer. So that'd be a, an output transformer that you can take in or out of the path. Yes, right okay. here, sir. Right, uh, right. Yeah, right here. All right, very cool. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm glad, I'm happily in a state of back order. Yeah, oh, <laughs> nice, a nice. Thing. What Hum Audio started with, the first product, was this guy. That's a large microphone. It's, it's not a missile, nobody got hurt. <laughs> it, was, it did not appear in any conflicts. That's a stereo ribbon with a built-in microphone preamp. Oh, okay. Imagine like orchestral situation, like that's my background, classical music recording. Yeah, a lot of times, you put it in a room 50 feet up in the air, it's what, 80 feet of cabling, and ribbons that usually require more gain than yeah, usual right, right. mics. With that kind of setup, there's gonna be noise. Yeah. So right now, you have an inch of a cable. Because of the built-in preamp, it's gonna spit out line level. So you right. can have it anywhere without any uh, introducing any additional noise or problems like that. Uh, you got two XLRs here. The cable goes to the power supply. From the power supply, regular XLR goes to this remote. Okay. You can run it through a patch bay, you can be three towns from here. You got your gain, you got your air boost, it's a nice top shelf. Mm -hmm. And you got your high pass, but the nicest thing is, now we're on left and right, now we're in mid-side. Uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, also, so that's a stereo with the built-in preamp. We have mono mics in two versions. They do not have built-in preamps, but there's a ARM1L, stands for long, that's a two-inch ribbon, yeah. just like the big guy, and uh, ARM1S, stands for short, it's a one-inch ribbon. Okay, okay. Little darker characteristic, so, yeah. Yeah, but the long ribbons usually have a higher frequency response before the, the taper, Yes, right? although, especially with this guy, you're gonna notice that the top end is nearly like condenser-like. Really? So, even, you know, with the air boost engaged, it's, it's bright, it's nice, it's airy, yet it doesn't get, you don't get the shrill, like a lot of times, for instance, when you're doing violin or string instruments, a lot of times they can introduce that sound that hurts your eyes, per se. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And here, oh, man. this thing. You don't, you don't see many things that look like this uh, anymore? No, if you, would, uh, if you wanna know what over-engineering means, <laughs> this is the, uh, this is it. So, both of the, uh, the owners of the, the Hum Audio, they're award-winning engineers in Poland, that's how they used to make their living. Uh -huh. They work analog, Crystal runs a ton of, uh, uses two-inch tape. And they had several consoles, and you know every every equipment somehow falls short in whatever aspect. And they said, "How about we just build something that's gonna solve a lot of problems?" And yes, you have consoles that you know already established in the market. They they're on a warmer side, they're on a more, you know cleaner side. We figured let's do something that will take care of all your problems. So let's start with the channel strip. We have a preamp that's based around the Jensen 990. It's clean. It's clean, musical, wonderful. Not everybody likes clean. You want to give it some hair, you can engage our custom on transformer in a circuit. If that's not enough, I know you want more. <laughs> There's a THD circuit. It's symmetrical and asymmetrical, so you can really make it sound like a big muff on a bad day. Right, right, right. If you wish. Next thing over. We have an insert point, in and out. You can also engage blend knob on it. After that, there's an optical compressor with a tube makeup game, LA2-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And here's the thing, when the compressor, when you bypass it, the signal will still run through the tube. Okay. If you don't want it, you can turn off the tube completely, that's out of the circuit, and you still prolong its life. Uh, compressor has a side, uh, has a side chain filters. It can be keyed from the external source and our auxiliary seven and eight. So for instance, if this is your kick channel, send it to eight, the whole board will talk to it. It can be side chain to that. Oh, wow, okay. After that, we have our filters, high pass, low pass, and this is a passive three band EQ. Passive circuit. Just though. like the good old days. Yeah. Is it, so, it, it's solid state passive. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the tube is only for the makeup gain on, right. the, on the compressor. On the compressor, right. So on, uh, on the EQ, for instance, that's your high frequency. You have a boost selector and a cut selector. It's just like you know, the good old Jersey Poltex. Yeah, yeah. After that, you have eight oxes. They can be linked to stereo. That's your short fader. So that, okay, that's the two tape fader? Or, I mean, if you flip it, you can Well, be. yeah, hit the flip, and this is the two tape. Yes. Yeah, that's monitor. Exactly. And you got a pan, and uh, what's this? What is it? What do you, what do you call it? Uh, well, I call it a fader. It's not a fader. It's a switch. Oh. There's a network of 250 resistors. Oh, wow. So it's as accurate as it gets. They never go out of spec. They always come back to where they need to be. A lot of times you see on other consoles, faders might go a little bit off when they when you recall it or like when you bring it to zero, it's not always zero. This will stay accurate unless you set it on fire. So these are motorized? They are motorized. Okay, okay gotcha. And that's another thing. You hook, you hook it up to your rig, you fire up a session, they already talk into Pro Tools. So you can have your auxes or your dummy faders to the left. It will pass audio, but it's controlled and automated via that. Now, there's a DAW mode. When you engage that, that fader disappears out of the signal chain. That switches to Unity Game, but that will still control your process. Okay. So you, okay. Have a, you have a control surface, and sometimes you want to work just in a box. The faders are right here. Now the fun part. We go into the center Do section. Do you mean there's more? Yeah. <laughs> you got to be home on Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The center section. That started as a high-end mastering console. And we just decided why not add channels to it? Because we can, right? Right, right. So you got your auxiliary returns, filters, auxiliary masters, stereo with control on every group, just like in the loud limiter. Yeah. Then we go to master fader. I mean, that's the master fader. Okay. So nobody does the phase anymore, you know, with the hardware. Uh, same thing as on a channel, it has the compressor and the EQ. And now where it gets super interesting, you can put three external inserts. You can put them in whatever order you want. And you can you also have that option on the channel because because between insert, EQ, and compressor, there's six options. They're all here. So you have three stereo inserts, you put them in whatever order you want. They can be uh, they can be blended, wet dry, if you wish. Now, there's also EQ and the compressor here, plus the insert, whatever order you want. And on top of that, you have a mid-side matrix. But the mid-side matrix, you will decide what part of that signal chain it will take care of. For instance, in the first position, you take all your three of your inserts, they're all gonna run in mid-side. That's another position, only insert one is in mid-side, the rest are stereo. So for instance, if your EQ is a number insert one, your EQ is gonna be mid-side, the rest is gonna be stereo. Saves a lot of time because you're not gonna live under your patch bay or realizing that you mislabel things. That's what I do. After that, of course, stereo with again on the master fader, custom or transformer. Yeah. Regular facilities of, you know, uh, input sources, four speaker selectors, or headphone amps in the front with a, uh, with a source selector and the volume. Oh, wow, I just noticed that. Yeah. Four heads, okay. Plus, wow. of course. Yeah. For the big guy. They're also copied in the back. All right. Now, when we're going here, you know this guy, right? I do. Yeah, so it calls with a DC clarity. It's gonna, your master, uh, master fader is routed to that with the analog input, so it shows you the RTA. But there's also AES input in the back, you just switch it from analog to digital. 
and you can monitor your return from Brussels. Gosh. Yeah. You, you, you have packed. You have packed a lot of uh, things. If not more. And for instance, if I may, excuse me, gentlemen. This is the channel strip. Yeah. Not a single IC. We don't do chips. You want chips? Go to the grocery store. Not here. <laughs> Custom on transformer just for us. Proprietary. Uh, over here we got a uh, old, old, old ECC tubes uh -huh. on a master put mullers. Power supply. You can see it now, but there's no fans. There's doesn't create ton of heat. So you can keep it in the control room with you. And you can turn it off every night. Oh, oh. That's oh, another yeah. thing, right? That is a nice thing. Uh, the power supply can power up to four sections. Section being either bucket of eight or a master. So out of one rack, you can have 24 channels plus the master. This beauty is actually sold. It's going to uh, a few times over after uh, after the show. And uh, yeah, this is it. Hum audio. Hum audio, all because right. Because we can. <laughs> well, thanks for giving us the rundown and all your stuff. My pleasure. Uh